So last week or two weeks ago, or whenever this video comes out, I got a couple of PCs from a company called CLX. Now, they are both pretty high-end machines and pretty much the best systems you can buy on the market, but the main difference between them is their CPUs and the CPU platform. Now, the performance of AMD's highest-end CPU versus Intel's highest-end CPU is what I was supposed to originally talk about, but I've watched way too many tech videos on YouTube to know that that has been done time and time again, and I'm not much of a benchmarking kind of guy, so instead of talking about what CPU is going to be better than the other, I just want to talk a bit more broadly about the platforms in general, not just about the CPU's raw performance and my overall experience with them. But before we do that, we do need to go over the specs of both machines. Now, I'm going to put up some infographics displaying a spec list of these systems for you guys to look at, but as you can see, they are both pretty much the same system. They both have RTX 3090s, pretty much the same case, the same cooling, similar motherboards, and the same power supplies. The main difference between them is going to be the CPU and the RAM that each system is running. On the AMD system, we have a Ryzen 9 5950X with 32 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz DDR4 memory, and on the Intel system, we have an i9 12900K with 32 gigabytes of 5200 megahertz DDR5 memory. When it came to gaming, I played a cumulative of three hours of video games on each system, and each of those hours, I played three different games: CS:GO, Destiny 2, and Halo Infinite. I picked these games mostly because they give a good generalization of what most games demand on their hardware. CSGO is very easy to run graphically, so it's going to stress the CPU a lot. Destiny 2 is more graphically demanding, but it's very well optimized, so it's going to stress the GPU more. But if the CPU isn't up to par, then the CPU is going to be the bottleneck on the system. And Halo Infinite is one of the more demanding games out now, and it does a great job of stressing the CPU and the GPU at the same time. I played the games at 1080p high settings on a 1080p 144Hz monitor, so I could try and stress the CPU and see if I could notice any large differences. And the shocking answer is no. While the 12900K did have a good bit more FPS on CSGO, it felt like a very similar playing experience on both systems. In both other games, the GPU was the bottleneck, so the FPS was pretty much the same, and I think that's going to be the story for most people who have these CPUs. I think most people who are going for a gaming system don't really need to worry a whole lot about the differences between the AMD 5000 series and Intel 12th gen CPUs. They both perform really well in any gaming scenario, and pretty much the only time when you're going to see large differences in performance is playing games that are super easy to run and drive a lot of FPS. Most gamers like to keep their games within the 60 to 120 FPS range, and both types of CPUs should easily handle that kind of work. But if you are going for the highest FPS possible in games, then technically Intel 12th gen should probably be the line of CPUs you are looking for. I also did some video editing on these systems, and for the most part, they were great at editing 4K 30fps video footage in DaVinci Resolve, but for some reason, I was getting more stuttering when scrubbing through the timeline on the Intel system than on the AMD system, but then rendering was a lot better on the Intel system. So when looking at benchmarks though, the Intel 12900K is going to perform better in video editing across the board, and this is a trend with the rest of the lineup from Intel. Most of their CPUs outperform the Ryzen 5000 series when it comes to video editing, so if you are looking for a rig dedicated to just video editing, I think Intel 12th Gen would be the way to go. Now when it came to temperatures and power draw, AMD won by a good bit. While both the 5950X and 12900K suck down a lot of power, when the 12900K gets going, it can suck down upwards of 220 watts, while the AMD system uses just a fraction of that power. This results in the 12900K being pretty hard to cool, even for a 360 mm radiator. This isn't just restricted to the 12900K though, pretty much all of the 12th gen CPUs suck down a lot of power and can get pretty hot, so if you are someone who is very energy conscious or doesn't have the cooling headroom for one of these chips, it might be better to go with the AMD option. So when it comes to overall performance, I think Intel wins, but at the cost of power efficiency, which is something AMD has become pretty good at. But there is one thing that I think we definitely need to talk about, and that is pricing. The overall pricing for AMD CPUs has gone down significantly in the past couple of weeks, and makes them pretty much in line with the cost of most Intel 12th gen CPUs. And LG 1700 motherboards have started to fall in price, which for the most part makes a CPU and motherboard combo on either platform around the same price, but there are some factors that can change that. Intel 12th Gen supports both D3 
DDR4 and DDR5. And while in most tasks, DDR4 is around the same performance as DDR5, DDR5 still costs a heck of a lot more than DDR4. So if you buy a motherboard that only has slots for DDR5 DIMMs, you will have to buy DDR5 memory. AMD, on the other hand, hasn't had a big update to their lineup in a while, so all of their CPUs are still running DDR4, which is great when it comes to cost, but in the future, if DDR5 becomes cheaper and better performing, you'll be locked out from it completely. Intel also has that whole power consumption problem that can result in you having to buy a more high-end cooler and power supply than you would on an AMD system. My take on this issue is that overall, Intel 12th Gen is going to be the better long-term platform because it has support for things like PCIe 5.0 and DDR5, but at the cost of having to spend a lot more on a system than if you want to get a similar AMD system. On the other hand, while AMD does give you the best value for your money, it's pretty much an end of a life platform. AM4 motherboards are going to be replaced by the following AM5 boards coming out later this year. As well, there aren't going to be any new CPUs coming out on the platform to upgrade to, and once DDR5 starts to go down in price, you'll still have to buy DDR4. So there are definitely pros and cons on each platform, and depending on what you're looking for in a PC, I think there are reasons to go for either one of them. And I know that most of you are probably looking for a clear-cut answer, but just got the classic, it depends answer. But that's how it is most of the time when it comes to computer hardware. Everyone has different needs or wants when it comes to a system. Someone might be very budget constrained and want to get the best value gaming build that they can get, or maybe someone doesn't care a whole lot about how much it costs as long as they get the the best video editing rig they can get. There are always multiple factors to take into account, but for the most part, I don't think anyone is going to be really upset with either of these platforms. They are both the cutting edge of CPU technology and offer a ton of performance for whatever task you are doing. Now that just about does it for this video. If you did end up enjoying it, make sure to hit that like button and get subscribed if you want to see more content like this. Also, if you have any questions about this kind of stuff, make sure to leave those down in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Thank you.